A warm welcome to you all today. My name is Jennifer. Buenos dias to our amigos in Chile. Hello, my name is Matthew. We are delighted to be with you today, and we hope you enjoy our Climate Voices session, which has been developed by young people in Chile and Scotland. We would like to extend our personal welcomes to Ms. Lorna Slater, uh, co-leader of the Scottish Party, who will um, be here around 10 o'clock today. And to Professor Sir Anton Muscatelli, Principal of University Glasgow. And to, and to Ms. Laura Mason, Chief Education Officer at Western Bartonshire Council. And a special welcome to Carlos, Milena and all our friends in Chile. Great, thank you very much. That's a, that's a fantastic welcome and, and an introduction to um, this, this morning's session. And I, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm delighted to be here too with, with the rest of the team. It feels slightly strange, if I'm, if I'm being honest. It's the first time that I've stood up in front of people um, in nearly two years, I, I, th I think. So let's hope that we're sort of moving back or, or forward um, to, to something different. But this is a really important um, celebration today, actually, a celebration of um, children and young people coming together um, from across the world, 7,000 miles apart, so far away, so far apart in some ways, but so close in, in other ways. And we've seen that, I think, over the past um, set, 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 seven, seven, or, seven or eight months, there is so much in common. We've been thinking about how we can act locally in terms of tackling climate change, but also, um, uh, as um, the principal said, thinking globally and learning from each other. We've had children and young people learning from each other. We've had researchers learning from each other, and we've had school teachers and other educationists also learning from each other. So really the, the underlying theme about what we've been doing today is really about learning from each other to tackle what is the key and defining issue of our time, that of um, climate change and how we actually secure the future of the world for our young people and the following genera generations. You may not be aware, but um, there's actually a history of collaboration between Chile and Scotland. And um, I'm just gonna take one example. Um, many of you will remember, or some of us will remember 1973. I just, I just about remember it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, when Pinochet um, and his junta um, formed the dictatorship um, in Chile. And he um, bombed the a presidential palace, the government palace in Santiago with Hawker Hunter airplanes. Now these Hawker Hunter airplanes were made um, in, in the UK. And um, these airplanes were powered by Rolls-Royce jet engines. And these jet engines could only be serviced and repaired probably about five or six miles from here in East Kilbride. And of course, when these jet engines needed to be repaired, they came back to Scotland. And the workers in the factory in East Kilbride got wind of what was happening in Chile. And they um, blacked these engines. And to black an engine means that they can't be worked on. So they couldn't be serviced, they couldn't be repaired. And they sat at the factory in East Kilbride in Scotland, which of course meant that aeroplanes on the ground in Chile from the Chilean Air Force could not be used by Pinochet to attack their own people. So there's a very strong bond between the people of Scotland and the, and the people of Chile. We're united by a set of values, which really underpins the spirit of this collaboration, of wanting to work together in solidarity and learn from each other. And most importantly, to do the right thing. Scottish people did the right thing in 1973. Those engines sat here for four years and couldn't be used, which meant those aeroplanes stayed on the ground. The children and young people of Chile and Scotland are once again, trying to do the right thing by thinking about these issues of climate change. And that's really, really important. The blah, blah, blah is going on over the river. 
but actually the real action is happening here, where the children and young people, the teachers, the educators are getting together and they're actually making a difference by working with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. And this isn't just about a one-off event or two weeks. This has been going on now, the collaboration has been going on for four, four or five years. And um, to sort of fast forward from 1973 to the start of this collaboration, well, it, well, it, all, it, all, it all started really um, in October 2019 when I was fortunate enough to be um, working with our colleagues in Catholic University in Valparaiso with Carlos and Elena, who we will, who we will see later, and, and, and indeed Romina. And um, at the end of that visit, I was working with another, going on the way back to, to Scotland, was working with another colleague um, in Santiago. And I happened to arrive in Santiago the day the protests started. And of course, um, I was dodging. It was a new experience for me, I have to be honest. And I'm, I'm sorry, Anton, I didn't do a risk assessment. It just <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, um, and I was sort of dodging tear gas and protests and um, restaurateurs were coming out onto the pavements with um, segments of orange because orange combats the effects of tear gas uh, uh, and so forth. And it, it was all very exciting. And you know, I, I, I managed to you know, make, 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 make my way home th through that and, and, and the various meetings which were less exciting than the, than the tear gas to be, to, to, to be honest. Um, but it got me thinking really. Um, and of course that those, that those events, those protests um, led to um, a, a number of outcomes. Of course, um, most importantly, the opportunity for a new constitution of Ch for Chile, which again goes back to those values and the importance of um, organized action and people coming together with the belief that they can actually make a difference just like we are in, the, in, in this room today. But of course, the, the protests ultimately led to um, COP25, which was going to be in Santiago um, at about this time in 2019, being moved, being moved to Spain. Of course, that got me thinking, I thought, well, you know, the children of Chile and the young people of Chile have missed out on the opportunity to discuss these ideas. And wow, COP26 is coming to Glasgow. Wouldn't it be great if we could connect the countries, the children and the young people, the teachers, the, sc the schools, to really um, get underneath this um, really critical event that is going to determine all, 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 all of our futures. So that's why we're here today. It was just an idea. And you know, I want you to hang on to the importance of ideas, because sometimes we forget about that in the, in the busyness and the hustle and bustle of our day. It's really important to have ideas. And that's what universities are about. And as, as, as Anton said, you know, just thinking about your future and thinking about the possibilities and developing your ideas and coming to a place, it might not be Glasgow, but a place like Glasgow in the future might be a really exciting and an interesting thing for you to do. Now, I'm gonna stop talking because this isn't about adults standing up talking. Um, it's really about children and young people. I'm gonna um, just say one thing before I hand over to Rachel. And that's really a massive, massive thank you to yourselves, the children and young people who have made all this happen, but also to um, your teachers um, in Valparaiso and, and in Western Bartonshire, um, who have shown immense courage, resilience, um, and determination because they realize and they know how important this is to make this happen during the most challenging of times. And, you know, Laura and myself, you know, we sit in meeting after meeting after meeting, talking about the challenges and, and the, the, the difficulties, but the fact that Western Bartonshire Council has been so supportive and the schools and the teachers have been so supportive. And of course, the young people ultimately have made it happen. I just think is a testimony to um, the fantastic hope and the fantastic quality of children and young people that we have um, in Scotland and particularly in West Dunbartonshire. So thank you to staff and, pu and pupils alike. I'm just going to hand over to Rachel at that point. And thank you, Matthew and Jennifer, for standing up here with me as well and holding my hand because you don't know how nerve wracking this is speaking to all these people. So thank you. Uh, 
Uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Rachel Cooper. I'm the Programme Director for Children's Neighbourhood Scotland. And like Chris said, possibly a touch rusty because it's been a couple of years since I've been stood on a platform as well speaking to anybody, so bear with me. But first of all, before any further, thank you very much for everybody who got out of bed early, put their school uniforms on and chose to come down here and work with us on this project. It's been really appreciated, we really appreciate your time, your efforts and your energy in bringing this project to fruition. So I'm not going to take too much time going through the background because you don't need another adult talking to you at this moment, but just to give you a bit of history around Children's Neighbourhood Scotland. So Children's Neighbourhood Scotland came into being circa three years ago. It was designed to support children to be able to articulate their voice and give them a sense of agency around their thoughts and their ambitions and what that can be done to support positive change in their communities. As I say, every journey starts with the first step. And with children, they're taking their first steps into the adult life, and it's the adult life that they need to manage and navigate for the future. And with climate such a crucial issue, no wonder this became a topic of conversation for us. So Children's Neighbourhood Scotland works in six locations, Western Barton being one of them, where you guys have all travelled in from today, but we also have sites in Glasgow and in South Lanarkshire. And our work is kindly supported by Scottish Government and additional funding comes in from each of the councils and indeed a philanthropic donation to support our work. This piece around agency is key and having children and enabling children to feel confident to articulate their worries, their concerns, their ambitions, their ideas, their creativity, to help find and source solutions for our future planet is a key piece. And every element of this starts with children and young people going forward. So through our work, we dovetail a combination of academic rigor and research, and we have some of our researchers here today, and many of you met them through the pieces of work you've been doing. And we dovetail that with our local coordinators, who are the people based in each location, who try and be the actor to enable that action, that positive change and that impact to come to bear bringing together collaboration and collective action to ensure that ambitions aren't just ambitions, but we can work towards making them reality. So in essence, our work is not done. In terms of what Children's Neighbourhood seeks to achieve and what we seek to do now and for the future, so much more to do. But we can only do it as long as we work in neighbourhoods and with children and with young people to bring this forward. So again, thank you all very much for coming along to be with us today. I am now going to shut up and we're going to hear from some others next. So next on the agenda is Romina. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. Muy bienvenidos y bienvenidas a todos nuestros amigos en Chile, nuestros colegas en Chile. Welcome to everyone. Um, I'm just so, so happy to be here with you all um, this day. Um, and, and please forgive me, I'm, I'm just going to try to read a little bit because I don't want to miss any of the things that I, I want to share with you today. Um, we have been expecting and preparing us for, for these days for, for a long time, um, seven months. Um, um, and, and still working during the pandemic, and as 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 many as any journey, this has been you know has brought us so many challenges and as well so many opportunities on on, on the way. Um, I just want to say that I'm so humble to have experienced firsthand the, the amazing capacity of you young people um, to face the present, um, imagine future, and humanize us, the adults in the process. I also have. The, the luxury to experience firsthand the incredible drive, passion, and commitment of teachers in Scotland and Chile that share so much being so far away. This project is a research practice partnership, and a research practice partnership is just a model for, for collaboration that focuses on addressing issues of practice, but bringing um, diverse voices, roles, and contexts and disrupting boundaries among them. What we have done during the last seven months is um, in a simple way, learn and take from the model that CNS have developed about as a tool, take it as, take it as a tool to ask the question, 
why, why if we use this model, the capabilities approach to promote voice, student voice regarding to climate change issues? What if we do that? What could happen? And then we have adapted and implemented that model in Chile and having so much learning about that implementation and then brought it back to Scotland to share the learning and share the insights with you and, and, and creating with you to stimulate and encourage your young people in Scotland to take action, to realize the power of their voice. In this journey, we have worked with two main objectives, promoting student voice agency in a global understanding around climate issues and developing and strengthening teachers' capacities to collaborate with other teachers, with researchers, and also to include these topics into the curriculum in a more holistic way. I will stop there I, as I don't want to take more time for the student. I just want to say um, they, they are the start of this morning in Glasgow and in Chile as well, very early in Chile. And I just want to say two things. Um, one is actually about um, health. So um, um, we, we have um, face covering mandatory, please. Um, when entering, leaving, oh, um, being in the room and remove them when sitting, eating and drinking. Um, please observe social distance. There is hand sanitizers. And, and also we are going to be taking photos this morning and share that, that in social, social media. Um, so if you have some concerns about that, just let us know and just enjoy, enjoy the morning. Thank you so much. Solo tenemos que pensar en la contaminación y la indiscriminada quema de combustibles fósiles. Solo tenemos que ver la cantidad de residuos agrícolas, industriales y domésticos generados día a día. Solo tenemos que predecir qué le sucederá a la tierra, el aire y el agua si se sigue contaminando. Piensa en nuestras acciones y por favor no te rindas. Aunque el sol queme, aunque el miedo muerda y el clima grite, aún hay fuego en tu alma. Aún hay vida en tus sueños. Levando. No es mi Benjamín, toma tres, acción. Hola. Oh, no me confundí. De nuevo, algo de nuevo. Hola. Eh... Ah, ah, no. eh, eh. ah, hola. Bienvenidos a nuestro hola. colegio Luis Cruz Martínez. Vamos a ver. Mi nombre es Milena Páez, soy profesora de física. Eh, mi nombre es Carlos Duque, soy profesor de Química de la Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaíso. Con Carlos nos conocimos el año 2019 en el contexto de unas pasantías docentes que realizó la Universidad Católica de Valparaíso con diferentes escuelas de la región. En ese contexto trabajamos también con la Universidad de Glasgow y quedamos en contacto y por lo tanto surgió la idea de realizar algún proyecto asociado al cambio climático y que pueda ser presentado en la COP26. Eh, nosotros trabajamos con un enfoque que utilizaban en Glasgow que se llama el enfoque de capacidades y este enfoque tiene la característica de cómo podemos dar voz a los estudiantes sobre temáticas locales. Entonces nosotros adoptamos ¿cierto? este enfoque que se desarrolla en Glasgow y lo enfocamos ¿cierto? al cambio climático. La idea fue trabajar en las clases de ciencia adaptando el currículo al cambio climático y cómo podemos hacer que nuestros estudiantes puedan tomar decisiones y potenciar sus habilidades científicas dentro de la asignatura de ciencia. Luis Cruz Martínez tiene casi una década trabajando en este proceso de incorporar y relevar el medio ambiente de manera transversal en su quehacer como comunidad educativa. Sobre todo si tenemos en cuenta que el colegio es el escenario donde se favorece la generación de conocimiento, actitudes y conductas, se busca fomentar en toda la comunidad una educación para la sustentabilidad. Se hace necesario esta plataforma de desarrollo individual y comunitario que releve la educación, brindando a sus miembros este espacio para poner 
hacerse contacto con la naturaleza y también con los problemas ambientales de su comunidad. Es decir, ofrecerles una experiencia a través de una serie de actividades vivenciales y el fortalecimiento de materias básicas como matemáticas, ciencias, geografía, con la educación no formal para desarrollar un pensamiento crítico, habilidades de resolución de problemas de su entorno y también en escala global, que en origen una comprensión y apreciación de la interdependencia del ser humano, su cultura y su entorno biofísico. Los registros que veremos a continuación fueron realizados durante el año escolar 2021, donde a pesar de la pandemia provocada por el SARS-CoV-19, fuimos desarrollando diferentes proyectos con niñas y niños de 11 a 13 años y jóvenes de 17 a 18 años. Hubieron momentos donde trabajamos en modalidad virtual, otros momentos donde se trabajó con un grupo de estudiantes desde la sala de clases y otros desde sus casas. Encontramos en una situación marcada por problemas socioambientales y como docentes tenemos el deber de contribuir a formar ciudadanos y ciudadanas conscientes de la actual situación que vive en nuestro planeta. Para esto toma importancia la educación para el desarrollo sostenible, la cual debe ser abordada de una manera transversal, considerando todos los ámbitos de aprendizaje de la vida escolar, como las asignaturas y la relación docente-estudiante. Esto para proporcionar los conocimientos, las competencias, las actitudes y los valores que sean necesarios para poder superar desafíos mundiales interrelacionados con el cambio climático, la pobreza y las desigualdades. Bajo esta misma línea, hemos podido relacionar y diseñar actividades de aprendizaje desde el enfoque de capacidades, el aprendizaje basado en proyectos y una lógica por competencias presentes en el currículo en escolar de ciencias. Lo anterior nos permite transitar hacia un modelo que promueva la justicia social y ambiental para formar una ciudadanía críticamente alfabetizada que cuestione las problemáticas medioambientales en su, en su territorio. Los estudiantes no solo deben estar al tanto de los contenidos o conceptos relacionados con el cambio climático, sino que además su formación debiese apuntar hacia la toma de decisiones y acciones, lo cual implicaría un mayor compromiso social y político desde el diálogo y la colaboración. El trabajo de los y las estudiantes de cuarto año medio comenzó con una actividad donde identificaron qué dominios de capacidades encontraban ausentes sus contextos y cuál de estos les interesaba trabajar con el proyecto de la asignatura. El principal dominio en el que tuvieron interés fue el de tener acceso a la naturaleza. Con estos presentes se comenzó a trabajar sobre las problemáticas medioambientales que encontraban en su quehacer cotidiano. Gran parte del curso coincidió que en la ciudad de Quilpue uno de los principales problemas medioambientales estaba relacionado con la gestión de los residuos. A través de relatos de vida fueron compartiendo experiencias relacionadas a esta problemática identificada. Contaban sobre lugares que visitaron con amigos o familias y que en la actualidad se encuentran microbasurales, contaminación de aguas y también contaminación del aire. Para buscar soluciones frente a esto, los y las estudiantes comenzaron una investigación grupal. Cada grupo identificó los diferentes tipos de residuos presentes en los territorios que ellos escogieron para posteriormente proponer soluciones desde el ámbito científico, específicamente soluciones con la perspectiva de química verde y así pro proponer soluciones amigables con el medio ambiente para poder combatir los residuos y la contaminación en sus territorios. De esta manera, los y los estudiantes pudieron ser ciudadanos conscientes de lo que ocurre en su territorio, vincularon su conocimiento científico y tuvieron voz en la toma de decisiones que afectan a sus territorios. Hola, nosotros somos los alumnos que elaboraron el proyecto de Colillas de Cigarro. Según la Organización Mundial de Salud, Chile es el primer país con mayor prevalencia el consumo de tabaco. Dentro de nuestra comuna detectamos esta problemática y decidimos recolectar todas estas colillas de cigarros que encontráramos en la calle o en el cerro y con estas producir eh, un sustrato con el cual podríamos degradar estas colillas con el hongo Oscar. Eh, todas estas colillas las juntamos y las mandamos a esterilizar a la universidad. Luego con las colillas las procedemos a embolsar en distintos formatos. Uno traía 100% sustrato otro 50% de sustrato y colillas, como este. Otro traía eh, 100% de cigarro. En conclusión, nuestro proyecto se basa en, en hacer los desechos de colillas y cigarro en sustrato y disminuir la contaminación en el planeta. Y al terminar nuestro proyecto, queremos ver si el hongo otra que se genera gracias al sustrato y a las colillas si es comestible o no.
de contaminación en los cerros de Quilcue, específicamente el cerro que está al lado del cementerio parroquial, han convertido estos verdaderos vertederos ilegales donde las personas van a tirar todo tipo de desechos a las quebradas. Tristemente, no solo desechos los que tiran, sino que muchas veces se pueden encontrar las cosas muertas en dicho lugar, lo que hace del lugar específicamente pestilente para los habitantes que circulan las zonas. Nuestra propuesta considera usar cal viva como agente neutralizante de dolores, identificando los focos donde se presentan los malos olores de origen orgánico y aplicando cal viva en los dolores. La cal es cerca de un de cuarto medio. Nuestra problemática trata sobre la contaminación que se encuentra en el tranque de Creo, en la localidad de Quilcue. Este lugar es un recinto privado pero es de libre acceso para las personas. La poca regulación ha generado contaminación sin límites que afecta a la flora y fauna del local. Las familias van de paseo a este lugar y por lo mismo llevan comida. Por esto es que podemos encontrar muchas especies de madera que ocupan mucho espacio y acceso, no solo en lugares que los públicos. Nuestra propuesta considera una manera de reutilizar la primavera. Puede ser disolvida esta en acetona, lo cual quedará como una especie de pesticida que se podrá moldear dándole diversas formas para luego, con este seco, poder reutilizarlo. Hola, eh, nuestro nombre es Paz Aguilera y Vanessa Araña y nuestro proyecto para la COP26 es el siguiente, utilizar la termofusión para reciclar bolsas plásticas. La problemática es que en la zona de Quipo, en el cerro, hay mucha presencia del plástico como basura de parte de la gente. Por ende, lo que nosotros decidimos hacer es recolectar estas bolsas plásticas aunque, y, y, y luego de eso utilizar la técnica de termofusión y con una plancha doméstica planchar estas bolsas una sobre la otra creando capas para fabricar un tejido resistente que pueda ser utilizado con los propósitos. Incluso puede ser una nueva oportunidad laboral porque este nuevo tejido plástico que estamos siendo amigables con el medio ambiente, lo estamos fabricando más eh, de este material plástico contaminante y le estamos dando una nueva vida útil. Trabajar en estos proyectos con cada los estudiantes ha sido muy gratificante y muy provechoso para nosotros que estamos a punto de titularnos. Ha sido una, una hermosa experiencia, la verdad, y nosotros queremos llevar la química eh, que pase en una asignatura compleja, sino que sea algo más eh, de la vida cotidiana, que nos logre entender nuestro entorno y nuestro mundo. Es súper importante también ver en el marco donde está este proyecto, ya que es súper importante también ser íntegro con las demás ciencias, acercarlas también al medio ambiente, por lo cual... Es súper importante que los chiquillos también vayan acercándose a las ciencias, más aún con un tema tan importante como el medio ambiente. Con el profesor Franco comenzamos a planificar la actividad que íbamos a implementar en los sextos básicos aproximadamente desde mayo de este año. Lo que queríamos era tratar de buscar una herramienta que pudiese potenciar las habilidades científicas de los estudiantes dentro de la clase de ciencia y cómo esta herramienta pudiese aportarles a ello a tomar decisiones sobre el cambio climático. La herramienta en cuestión corresponde a un kit ecoduino que fue obtenido gracias al financiamiento de la Universidad de Glasgow en Escocia. Este kit básicamente contiene una placa arduino con numerosos sensores que estaban justamente asociados a las variables científicas que los estudiantes estaban trabajando en la parte teórica de la clase de ciencia. El trabajo realizado con los sextos básicos contó principalmente con tres etapas. Una de las primeras etapas fue una etapa de contextualización y de reconocimiento del propio territorio para que los alumnos sean capaces de poder reconocer sus propias problemáticas a partir del cambio climático. Luego, con unas guías y unos videos tutoriales, empezaron a ver el funcionamiento de los sensores de cada uno de ellos para poder usarlo en pequeñas investigaciones científicas. Finalmente, vamos a concluir el trabajo con una investigación autónoma realizada por los propios estudiantes, donde van a tomar cada uno de los eh, proyectos que realizaron anteriormente para crear el propio. Hola, mi nombre es Sofía y mi nombre es y vamos a hablar del experimento que hicimos con el kit Arduino. Sí, sí. Eh, la cosa es que primero lo que probamos fue la temperatura del agua. Estábamos viendo y primero probamos con agua, agua es agua normal de la llave, fría. Sí, fría. Y así, al segundo día, eh, 
ahogamos con eh, el agua fría y después le pusimos un hielo para ver cómo reaccionaba. ¿Va a bajar la temperatura? Sí. Hay que esperar a que se derrita el hielo. Lo que me llamó la atención de los experimentos, uno fue cómo con un simple hielo podía cambiar la temperatura del agua y se asocia con el medio ambiente y cuando los glaciares se derriten por todo el mundo. Hola, buenos días. Hoy les contaremos sobre los resultados de nuestro experimento con un sensor de temperatura ambiental. Utilizamos el sensor de humedad y temperatura ambiental y lo colocamos sobre un recipiente con agua caliente. Los resultados fue que la temperatura y humedad aumentó. Esto lo relacionamos con la sequía, ya que al subir la temperatura hace que, la, que el agua se evapore y no logre cumplir su ciclo. Si sigue pasando el cambio climático, este podría ser la futura temperatura del agua y del planeta. También a los animales del agua, como los peces, los delfines, todo eso, como que ya que va a estar muy caliente, muy fría por el cambio climático, como que ya están acostumbrados a uno, entonces después al tiro tendrán que irse a otro. Primero armamos el kit, después tomamos la, de la temperatura del suelo. Segundo, lo enterramos en un macetero, tomamos la humedad, lo sellamos agua, la tomamos de nuevo y a ver si había un cambio. Esto se relaciona sobre el cambio climático, sobre cómo se van secando los suelos. Bueno, pues el proceso que yo tuve que vivir en las clases de ciencia fue, bueno, vamos a empezar desde el comienzo. Eh, me entregaron mi kit y los profesores lo fuimos a buscar a la sala de, creo que fue a la biblioteca. Lo recibí y empecé a trabajar desde mi celular conectándome a Google Meet con mis compañeros y mis profesores. Me fueron explicando poco a poco cómo se conectaba y todo eso. Y, y gracias a este kit eh, he logrado hacer unos experimentos pequeños en mi huerta para ver cuándo había que regarlo, cuándo no, y hacer pequeños experimentos de variación, si importaba más la luz, el agua, el tipo de semilla, el tipo de tierra, todo eso gracias a este pequeño kit que tengo a mi lado. Como ven, eh, aquí está mi pequeño experimento sobre la variación que hice de que, que importaba más, si importaba más el agua para el crecimiento correcto o si importaba más el sol. Así que puse este macetero todo el rato expuesto a la luz constante y poco le daba poca agua, no muy seguido y a esta casi nunca se expuso al sol. Y le daba constantemente agua todos los días y a lo largo de un mes eh, lograron crecer las que estaban constantemente con agua y lamentablemente se secaron las que estaban constantemente al sol. Eh, me conecto desde la tablet y trabajo de, con los profesores de armar el kit, cómo armarlo y cómo saber usarlo y, y cómo es bueno hacer los experimentos de la tierra, de la humedad y la temperatura del agua. Y, y me enseñó a hacer muchas cosas de esto porque nunca había hecho estas cosas. Me gustó trabajar el kit porque me enseñó cómo Hacer mucho experimento con la tierra, de la temperatura, de la humedad y es muy bueno armarlo. En cuanto a la implementación de, de este proyecto, al principio hay que reconocer que hubo un poco de incertidumbre por parte de los estudiantes porque había muchas estructuras tradicionales que iban a cambiar. Por ejemplo, ya no iba a haber solamente un profesor a cargo de la asignatura de ciencias naturales, sino que van a entrar a trabajar un equipo con distintas especialidades. 
la, la metodología iba a dejar de ser, eh, en primer lugar, virtual, para pasar a ser híbrida, y también iba a dejar un poquitito eh, la, la parte pasiva para ser un poquitito más activa, con el tema este del kit arduino. Y bueno, otro aspecto súper importante es que la evaluación ahora iba a tener un peso eh, eminentemente formativo, sin calificaciones de por medio, entonces... Eh, eso provocó este pequeño nivel de incertidumbre, pero que después fue cambiando y fue decantando con las semanas de trabajo. Sí, eh, cuando empezamos a trabajar, eh, la llegada de la presencialidad y de los kits fue súper importante, ya que los chicos se motivaron mucho más, tenían la motivación principal de que esto iba a salir en la COP, que iba a ser un evento muy importante para ellos, pero principalmente su motivación era por llegar acá y trabajar y que a su vez fueran escuchados su idea. Eh, actualmente estamos en un proceso, eh, estamos finalizando todo este proyecto, donde los chicos están utilizando su voz, su voz y sus ideas para crear proyectos científicos mediante el uso de los kits, donde ellos van a poder realizar sus, propia, sus propios proyectos y poder plasmar sus ideas en esto. Todo esto en el marco del cambio climático, donde ellos lo que están buscando es hacer un mundo un poco más. Mi nombre es Rosa Pérez Escobar, directora del Colegio Luis Cruz Martínez, ubicado en la quinta región de la ciudad de Quilpue. El rol de la comunidad en este Colegio Luis Cruz Martínez en la crisis medioambiental es propiciar condiciones para que nuestros estudiantes puedan dar respuestas concretas y reales que ayuden a solucionar esta problemática. Ellos tienen desarrollado a través de este proyecto y como colegio hemos enfatizado en que desde su sentir y de su cambio de actitud comparten esto con la comunidad, su familia y ayudan al planeta a la defensa del medio ambiente. Para mí como apoderado me, es llamativo y me gustó bastante. Me gustó la experiencia que los niños al menos tuvieron y sobre todo con ese encuentro de Escocia. Que fue bastante hermoso, bonito verlo. Es algo inusual. ¿Eh? Gracias. Eh, a nosotros como familia ha sido importante que Sebastián haya participado en este proyecto eh, porque nos ha hecho más responsable de nuestros actos. Sebastián ha estado bien metido en, en la situación y la verdad es que ha sido importante y súper rescatable y ojalá que se sigan haciendo estas cosas y yo también les agradezco a ustedes por la oportunidad que nos han dado, que no tan solo a Sebastián y al colegio, sino que nosotros como poder. Pensamos positivo ya que creemos que podemos integrar a más personas a hacer esto de la termofusión para que podamos aportar un granito de arena para el medio ambiente. Muchas veces solo basta como tener una idea y un, como un puntapié inicial para accionar a otras personas a recuperar espacios que son de toda la comunidad. Entonces cuando vinieron los chicos de cuarto medio hicieron una labor full. Limpiaron, sacaron colchones. Fue como muy impresionante y fue como la última gran limpieza que se hizo y fue acá. Sembraron flores que ahora ya luego van a empezar a... Ya están germinando, pero van a florecer y cuando ellos pasen van a decir, ah, eso lo planteé yo. Y eso es emocionante, no sé, a mí me emociona ver que hacer una, una semilla. Me gustó el trabajo de ciencia porque hablamos con los niños de Escocia y traí las plantas con los profesores y hicimos preguntas a los de Escocia y ellos respondieron. He ganado la mejor comprensión del cambio climático porque en mi colegio están todas las posibilidades de hacer eso. Como hace dos años, eh, haciendo cosas en la clase de mejores eh, ambientales y ahora ya hacemos juegos, re reciclamos, vamos al huerto y eso. eso. Dentro de las habilidades que pudimos desarrollar como docentes dentro de esta práctica ha sido el trabajo y la implementación de nuevos modelos de trabajo, así como también de la formación de los estudiantes donde ellos mismos participan dentro de sus propias señas. Además, nos ha dado capacidades para el trabajo con los niños y niñas en el aprendizaje a base de proyectos científicos. Una de las cosas que nos quedamos para poder seguir haciendo es seguir trabajando con el cambio climático, ya que es un tema muy importante. 
El carácter internacional de este proyecto nos permitió contribuir de una manera más efectiva a planificar las actividades que íbamos a realizar con nuestros estudiantes. Dentro de la colaboración que hicimos con Escocia, los estudiantes, tanto de cuarto medio como en sexto básico, participaron de actividades sincrónicas y asincrónicas con los estudiantes de Escocia. Así, utilizamos diferentes plataformas para que ellos pudieran identificar a su alrededor si es que notaban alguna consecuencia del cambio climático. Y luego, en un encuentro sincrónico, en los cuales ellos se pudieron reconocer, identificar que había un otro en otra parte del mundo y que también estaba viviendo las mismas consecuencias del cambio climático. Me gustaría que la niña de Escocia que aprendiera más español y que vinieran acá al colegio. Muchas veces hemos escuchado que el cambio debe generarse ahora. También nos imaginamos a las máximas autoridades de cada país tomando decisiones de cómo actuar. Pero, ¿qué son los países sin sus habitantes? ¿Qué hacen los habitantes para mejorar su entorno? Desarrollando habilidades científicas en las y los estudiantes, estamos preparando a esta generación para continuar optando. Las experiencias que acabamos de contar resumen en parte lo que vivimos, lo que aportamos aquí. En una escuela en Quilpue hay un grupo de profesores y estudiantes trabajando esperanzados en un mundo mejor. ¿Y tú? ¿Qué acción estás realizando para el cambio climático? So I think I speak for everyone in the room and I say a fantastic video and a big thank you to our friends in Chile for putting that together. They did a fantastic job in a very short um, amount of time, so it was really well done to them. Um, so we're going to hand over to St. Union's Primary School now, um, who are going to do a short presentation for us with their teacher, Miss Shearer. Um, before that, I'd like to say welcome to Miss Slater, who's just joined us. Um, yeah, Miss Slater is co-leader of the Green Party um, and has come along today to hear you, to hear your presentations and also to chat to you and maybe answer some questions as well. So make sure you say hello to her as well. Um, but I'll hand over to Miss Shearer and St. Union's Primary 7. Good morning. Good morning, buenos dias, and welcome to our presentation. We thank you so much for inviting us along to this event at University of Glasgow today. We're primary seven pupils from St. Union's Primary School in Clarebank, and we're honoured to be here. Over the last few months, we've been learning about the current climate crisis and are delighted to share our thoughts on on this with you today. So who are we? We are young people who are passionate about promoting pupil voice and using our voices to make a difference. We are committed to taking action on the climate crisis and encourage other young people to follow in our footsteps. What's in a chili? To most, this looks simply like a humble chili, one to tantalise taste buds and enhance home cooking. But to us, 
This space was symbolic of the beginning of an entirely new adventure, a partnership between two schools across the globe. And what a partnership it has been. Given the circumstances, we thought it only fair that we were entirely honest with everyone who is taking time to listen to us today. When Miss Shearer first wrote the word chili on the board in our classroom, we initially thought we were going to be developing our culinary skills. <laughs> Lots of us hadn't heard of this vibrant country in the west of South America. First of all, we looked at exactly where chili was on the map and we discussed its location compared to ours in Scotland. We discussed the continents at length and the equator position in Scotland along in Chile alongside what we might infer. Ms. Shira showed us some pictures on the board and asked us to write our initial thoughts about Chile. Here were some of our ideas. It was clear it was clear that our knowledge about Chile required a little bit of work. So we spent time researching and learning about Chilean culture and exploring Chile on Google Earth. We couldn't believe the size of Chile. We recognised how dry and desert looking the land appeared compared to the lush green fields and hills here in Scotland. Chile looked almost empty with plenty of land still available. This, this surprised us in comparison to Scotland, which seems far more built up and very busy. Oscar, Andre and Liam utilised artistic talents to draw both countries to scale, and these images form the foundations of our learning. Initially, it seems like Scotland and Chile couldn't be more different. <clears throat> However, the more we learned, the more we recognised many similarities between these two countries. For example, following further exploration of the buildings in Chile, we noticed that there were some very similar to ours in both architecture and design. Our initial thoughts about the climate in Chile were that it would be unbearably hot in summer and humid in winter. Surprisingly, we learned that the weather is in fact quite like ours that it can be mixed and entirely unpredictable. This led us to consider why this might be the case. Why are sunny days in the playground ended abruptly with unwelcome torrential rain? Why our winter months are far more mild than usual? Why we are seeing damages to houses, cars and buildings due to extreme flooding? Why wildfires are spreading due to dryness of our land? We have moved so far from the traditional unpredictable Scottish weather that Scotland is fast becoming unrecognisable. We were angry, but also filled with deep curiosity. We wanted to talk to young people in Chile, who are just like us, to see if they too were coming to the same conclusions. Arranged by Romina and Deja, our University of Glasgow leads, we were introduced to the children and staff in a school in Chile. We recorded messages to share with the Chilean pupils. We recorded messages to share with the Chilean pupils. Fortunately, we learned Spanish in our school, so we tried our best to make our new Chilean friends feel welcome by trying to ask some questions in Spanish. Despite the language barrier, and with the help of our translator, Romina, getting to collaborate and share ideas with children as passionate about making a difference as we are was the best opportunity ever. After two live interactive sessions, we realised that pupils in Chile were just as concerned about climate issues and also wanted to make changes to help save our planet. That made us think that lots of other children across the world probably feel the same. We know that we are all at the beginning of what is going to be a long journey, but we, along with the other young children, are not scared off by the level of commitment and dedication it will take to get our planet back on track. However, we need the opportunity we need the chance to speak to the people in charge. We want our voices to be heard and we want to be taken seriously. For us, this project is the start of the journey. Not only have we had the opportunity to collaborate with like-minded young children across the globe, but we've also had the chance to use our voices to hopefully make a difference. We can be a driving force for change and we deserve better.
There's no planet B. Thank you very much, guys. That was brilliant. Really well done to you all. You all spoke so well and with a lot of confidence and courage. So well done to you all. That was brilliant. Um, we're now, we're just going to have a short 10 minute refreshment break. So we've got some light drinks and snacks outside um, and the toilets are down that hallway into your right, um, just down there. So if you want to take 10, 10 minutes or so just to do that and stretch the legs and stuff, we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Thank you.
Um, can everyone start to make their way back to their seats, please? Just when they're ready. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we've now got a short video from both schools in Scotland, which is going to showcase a bit of the work they've been doing over the past few months. And then we'll have a short presentation from St. Peter's, the Apostle High School as well. Um, so we're just going to watch a wee short video for now. I've been flung in here, I can't get out. I'm killing this place, just help me out. Stop putting me where I don't belong. They blame it on me, it's not my fault. My smoky scent, my flaming eyes, burning down hills and houses too. I need to leave and so do you. It's not safe here, it's definitely not. I mean no harm, but harm I cause. I'm getting dizzy, now make me stop. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay still, but I'm just too strong. I'm knocking down houses and battling with lives. I can't deny the damage I caused, but you made me, so this is the price you have to pay. I'm filling this land with ugly dark waves, making this place all gloomy and grey. I'm out of place here, it doesn't feel right, destroying homes and countless lives. I'm hated everywhere, but I love what I see. I can't help it as I wash away the glee. Hello, I'm Dr. Romina Madrid and I'm a researcher for Children's Neighbourhood Scotland at the University of Glasgow. Since the beginning of the school year, we have been working with Scottish school teachers and school pupils who have been taking part in workshops with school children in Chile, where they discuss climate change and its effects in the run-up to COP26 in Glasgow. Children will bear the biggest impact from climate change, and it is crucial that we listen to their voice and recognize their hopes and concerns. The young people have talked about devastating impacts of climate change. Pupils in Clybank share their concerns on local issues, such as local building development's impact on nature, litter, and the air pollution present in the neighborhoods. Students in Chile have shared their own climate action issues, but also projects which use innovative ways to tackle local climate issues. And you will see and hear about this inspirational work today. Aligned with the Curriculum for Excellence, pupils at St. Newnan learn background information about Chile as a country and made connections to Chilean culture and history in more than one subject area. For example, in arts, they looked at historical buildings in Scotland and in Chile. They contrasted percentages of food waste in Scotland compared to Chile and other countries. And they wrote poems about climate change. These different learning experiences were in relationship with the partnership between Scotland and Chile, were also placed on a wall, especially created to displace and share what they knew and have learned about Chile as a country and the contracts and similarities with Scotland. At St. Peter the Apostle, a range of gear groups and climate change group of students participated in workshops with Chilean students. In these workshops, Chilean pupils have presented their climate action projects and pupils have been inspired by the scientific, creative, and high-impact nature of the Climate Action Project, hopeful that others in the world were as passionate about tackling climate issues as they have been building these ideas into their own climate action work as St. Peter the Apostle. Taking a local perspective, as it is emphasized in the capabilities approach developed by Children's Neighborhood Scotland, students have debated about different issues around waste, pollution, and green space in Clybank. In the live workshop with the Chilean partners, students ask each other about their understanding of climate change and how and where they see the bigger impacts and what they felt were the most important issues to address. Do you think it's affecting you, climate change? So, like, when trees are getting chopped down, it's also, like, uh, taking away, like, air for us. And it's also taking away, like, birds' uh, homes, because that's where, like, they have like, nests and stuff. Yep. Sometimes in my garden, it can be really dry, and my dogs can't even go out because of how warm it is. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, we can't go out in the garden because it's foggy. Yep. Oh, well, we've got this, like, nice woods, like, right next to our house, but there's like the people that own it are right now trying to get it all cut down so they can have build more houses in it. It's not like there's no planet B. There is no planet B. That's exactly. There is no planet B. Right. And what does it mean? 
Liam? That means there's only one. I don't know if we have to look at it because yeah. we're going to make sure it's going to turn into it. It really is it's not a difference if you're living in China, Russia, Chile, or Scotland because it's the same planet. I mean, it swipe and do that, so it's like carbon dioxide coming out of it, mm -hmm. and that goes into the atmosphere. How would you describe the, 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 the weather in Scotland? Sometimes I think the weather in Scotland doesn't really make sense because it, like, it goes from like, freezing to like, mm -hmm. so cold in the morning, and then like 30 minutes later, the sun is out and it looks like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so a, a lot of changes in, in the weather, right? So, from extreme to extreme, it seems to. Yeah. You know, yeah. In, in the summer, there is a lot of fires, and especially with the climate change, there are more and more fires uh, because it's getting super, super dry. So when it's a little bit of wind, the, the, the fire begins. The classmates are going to explain, explain you why we shouldn't um, get all people access to the park. Yeah. We don't think we should because it's like, if they're just going to burn the place for everyone else by electing it and polluting it, then they shouldn't be allowed like, that fun almost to like, have that space like everyone else does. But the thing is, like, everyone needs like fresher to live. But like, if you're going to pollute the area, then, like, but, like, you still need fresh air, so it's, yeah, it's like, really, really hard. So, most of us thought, hey, yes, I know. yes, you should have access to a nice, clean, tidy park, but no, someone's just going to come and wreck it for you. So. Obviously, everyone should be treated equally, and everyone should be allowed the same size. But if you're going to get ruined it for everyone else, you probably shouldn't be allowed to. Even if you let her, and even if you let her, if you go to jail, you still have to have a, um, a good, clean space to like, have fresh air to survive. And I have pointed out that it's a, see if you're like a small child or our age or under 18, you need to um fresh air and it's one of our children's rights number 24. That, that is your right that is in law that you as a child have a right to a space like that do you want to stand up for your rights if you're in the majority how are you going to stand up for your rights you, you, sh you should have a voice in your community so if, if you do then you can still support that out saying that you do have a right to say that so use your voice because if you have one and then you've got like, these rights and you want to stand up for them, you need to talk because the rights don't have a voice, so you need to use your voice for it. Does climate change affect people in Glasgow and Chile the same? Yes or no? Everyone should pitch in together for the solution, right? So we've got councils and us as individuals. Who else could we say has responsibility? Maybe the government, yeah. who, who makes these things? Uh, you throw, I throw garbage on the, on the street. And you say, hey, you pick it, pick it, pick it that up, you know, because it's your garbage. And I say, oh, it's, just, it's just one, it's just one bag. And it's, it, no, no, nobody cares, it's just one thing, it's just very small. This is not going to destroy the planet, of course. What, what would you say to me, Michael? Well, as somebody said that to you, but um, most people are probably going to be saying that, so I'll build up to lots of other bags and rubbish. Think about that in a bigger scale. Where, where does all our rubbish end up? And the 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 okay, so if we're thinking about our litter and, and where it's being being taken or where it's going, then these things happen, although that's a really local thing, that's your print market, like McDonald's bag or Burt's bag or whatever, that's still really global, okay, and that still affects countries and people um, far away from Scotland as well, okay? More than 35 pupils took part in these workshops, developing a global understanding, building empathy and connection to the climate crisis context in Chile as well as in Scotland. They also improved their verbal and reading communication, critical thinking, and group world skills. Definitely nothing worse than hearing your own voice in the video. Um, I'd now like to ask St. Peter's the Apostle High School, um, we've got a mixture of 
classes so they're going to come up and do their presentation if that's okay with their teachers thank you Hi, I'm Nia and I'm Avi, and we are part of the climate campaign group at St. Peter's Apostle High School and this is our presentation for COP26. A little bit about our school. St. Peter the Apostle is a Roman Catholic high school under my clay bank. SBT was formed in 2009 as an amalgamation of two former Catholic schools in the area. Some background information about clay bank. Due to its assets, clay bank has a proud industrial past and heavy industry has played a crucial role in the town throughout history. Clay bank is famous for its manufacturing of materials and vessels, including building and repairing battleships during World War II. John Brown Shipyard, the Titan Crane and Singer Sewing Factory meant that Clay Bank was the ideal place for Germany to strike. German Luftwaffe planes bombed Clay Bank twice during March 1941. These air raids are known as the Clay Bank Blitz. Recently, we have noticed a lot of local and national issues. These include air pollution, litter, hotter summers, seasons merging and torrential rain with flooding. Although, as a whole, Scotland's air pollution levels are significantly lower than countries such as India and Pakistan, Glasgow is Scotland's most polluted city. It is also one of, Scot one of the UK's most polluted areas. Studies show that Glasgow is more polluted than London, and Hope Street in Glasgow is one of the most polluted streets in Scotland. These pictures have been taken around our school grounds, and as you can see, the most common types of litter in our community are plastic bottles, empty cans, food wrappers, cigarettes, glass bottles, broken glass, and food, wait, fast food packaging. Another local and national issue is the hotter summers. Summer 2021 was the UK's ninth hottest summer on record. As well as this, it was also Scotland's fourth hottest summer on record. And shockingly, it was Glasgow's hottest summer since 1884. With temperatures in the UK reaching a peak of 32.2 degrees Celsius at Heathrow on the 20th of July and the peak temperature in Scotland being 27.2 degrees Celsius in Tantrum on August 25th, with, which also turned out to be the highest temperature recorded in the UK in August. The amount of torrential rain we have been experiencing recently has become increasingly worse, leading to floods in many places around Scotland. These are some examples of flooding in our local area in August of this year. The image on the left is the image of a flooded railway in Damure, and the image on the right is flooding in Kobawi Road near the town centre. These are some more images of flooding in and near to Claybank in the lead up to COP26. Why did our group form? We are a group of like-minded individuals, students and teachers from years S1 to S6, who share a common goal, to inform and educate our community on the escalating issues of climate change. Our group formed to raise awareness and inspire people to make a change. The timeline of our group. Our group for was formed in September 2021 by various teachers from the social subjects and English department after being delayed due to COVID. We started out by discussing possible climate solutions to incorporate into our school community on the lead up to COP26. We then began to take on bigger projects, such as initiating links with the school in Chile to discuss commonalities and differing factors with between how we respond to climate change. We plan on continuing our climate en endeavours after COP26 in hopes of making an impact within our local community and possibly beyond. After our group formed, we identified some key areas to focus our projects on. The projects we've been working on so far are to raise awareness and educate our school about climate change, to encourage people to consider meat-free diets, 
to address the issue of fast fashion and to reduce plastic waste in the school canteen. This was our first project. We discovered that many people in our school were unaware of COP26 and also how their actions can impact the planet both positively and negatively. So our solution was we decided to make desktop backgrounds that provide climate change facts as well as ways we can all help save the planet. Other backgrounds gave information on COP26 and its aims. Our law schools were, we were worried that people would just ignore the backgrounds, so we made them as colourful and as eye-catching as possible. And our plans future were, in order to keep people engaged and spread more information, we plan to make online quizzes for people to learn about climate change in a fun way. Vegetarianism. Reasons people should limit meat eating. To reduce methane production, a greenhouse gas set into the atmosphere by animals like cows and sheep digesting grass. To reduce land loss to rearing animals for meat, which is at an all-time high and is the leading cause of deforestation in tropical regions like the Amazon. Globally, we consume over 345 million tonnes of meat per year. In 2030, this number will be 453 million, a 44% increase. This is our last best chance. We must take action now. What action are we taking? We have compiled a list of our favourite meat-free meals and created a vegetarian cookbook in order to encourage people in our school community to limit their meat-eating habits. We have approached the Home Economics Department and the school canteen to get them to commit to meat-free alternatives. We have surveyed people about their meat-eating habits and will review this later on in the year to see the difference. Our obstacles. People in Scotland love meat. It is a large part of our diet and culture. Asking our school friends and community to do this will be challenging because we are asking them to break a lifetime of meat-eating habits. In the words of Marshall McLuhan, there are no passengers on Spaceship Earth we are all crew. In the words of Richard Branson, there is no planet B, we have to take action now. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. How does fast fashion contribute to climate change? First of all, what actually is fast fashion? Fast fashion is the production of clothes that are made and sold cheaply so people can buy new clothes more often. What is the problem? The fashion industry produces and sells somewhere between 80 billion to 150 billion garments a year. Textile factories use 100 to 150 litres of water for every kilogram of fibre. How will we create change? We will create change by designing informative but fun posters to give tips and advice on how to deal with clothing when you're done wearing them. Our obstacles. What are our obstacles? Our obstacles are influencers, cheap prices and greenwashing. Influencers promote the latest trends, cheap prices, fast fashion industry use cheap labour often sourced from sweatshops. What is greenwashing? When companies cover up polluting with green promises, what are our plans going forward? We will educate people about the devastating impacts fast fashion has on the environment and everyday changes that they can make to help. Or talk with Chile. Talking to students in Chile made us realise that there is always a way to recycle, reduce waste, and it just takes research, trial and error, and most of all, perseverance. Um, the canteen project. When speaking to the canteen staff, we were shocked to find out that they do buy mostly all recyclable packaging and try their best to recycle and dispose of waste they use in the kitchen. We realised then that the problem was not with what they were buying, it was actually what we as pupils were doing with this waste after we used it. Throughout the years at St Peter the Apostle High School, we have seen that this is a grown issue and it's not just us pupils who have noticed it. Many staff members have also raised a concern with this and have tried to warn us multiple times about it. To try and tackle the waste issue, we are planning on approaching our school council about getting sorting bins so pupils are able to put rubbish in the correct bin. Volunteer to test out the deposit return scheme in our school if possible. Approach our school about setting up composting bins to reduce food waste. 
One of the main obstacles that we noticed when asking canteen staff about their thoughts on making recycle bins accessible for all students, they told us that they already have brought this issue up with the council, however it was rejected. On the 6th of October, we had a virtual meeting with the school in Chile for the Lewis Cruz Martinez School. The experience widened our views on the different ways we can tackle climate change. While our group is more focused on awareness solutions, they use scientific ways to solve their problems. One of their solutions was dissolving polystyrene and acetone to make a new moldable plastic that could be used to make jewelry, cup folders, and other things. Here are some quotes from our classmates. It was a great experience. I realized a new way of reusing and recycling plastic and polystyrene. I was excited to meet the pupils from Chile. The Zoom call inspired me to do more about tackling and preventing climate change. Their approach was very abstract and scientific. I liked the way they thought outside of the box. Our meetings with the Chilean school have given us new insight into the global effects of climate change. We're all fascinated with the scientific methods and details that the Chilean school are using to tackle climate change. We're also inspired by their quality of work and passion for the topic. We're excited to progress in our learning about their culture through the furthering of our relationship with their school. The projects our group is focusing on for the future are fast fashion, we aim to reduce the amount of wasted clothing by encouraging people to shop secondhand or thrift rather than excessively purchasing clothes from fast fashion giants such as ASOS, Zara and Primark. Promoting plant-based diets will emphasise the importance of reducing our meat consumption as well as creating a meat-free cookbook for our school community, especially our school canteen to use. Reduce school canteen waste. We want to use more sustainable cutlery in containers in addition to implementing a rubbish sorting system. Speaking to our local council, we plan to develop a stronger relationship with our local council by negotiating realistic changes we can make within our community to combat the effects of climate change. So this is our question to the world leaders. We are showing our commitment. What will you do? Thank you very much, St. Peter's. That was really fantastic. And well done to all pupils for coming up and speaking. And I think uh, thank you as well to all the teachers involved there, Chris Duncan. Um, and Sorry, mine's full. Um, so huge thank you. A lot of background work going on there. So really, really important and great to see you all up um, speaking and sharing what you're doing. I love the kind of creative and simple but high impact solutions that you kind of drive forward in your in your school. Um, I'd just like to invite Miss Lorna Slater up to the stage just briefly. Um, and then we're gonna have a panel discussion um, with some of the teachers followed. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me today and for, for showing me your presentations and all the very hard work that you've been doing to learn about the climate crisis, to learn about Chile and other countries, and to do these excellent projects in your schools and communities. And it's wonderful to see that the same sort of things that I'm working on in government, the deposit return scheme, tackling litter, fast fashion, these are all the same things that we are dealing with at the government and national level. But to see you working on it in your local level, it really gives me hope and heart because I know you young people, You've got it. You've got this. You can do this. The, there are enormous opportunities ahead of you to have excellent jobs in designing the technology of the future, in reforming and regenerating our land, 
in designing the artwork and telling the stories that will inspire people. You will have a brilliant future ahead of you. And I know you've got this because you understand the climate and you understand what needs to be done. So well done. And thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you so much for those words. I think, yes, you, you got it. So um, some of the, the adults, you know, we are still in the process of getting it. <laughs> so um, I, I would love to invite um, some of the teachers that have been working with us from Chile. They're going to be connected now. They, they, are, they are seeing this. Um, and, and also to invite Katie, um, Duncan, Chris, and, and Carol um, to, to the panel just to share some reflections about this experience from your perspectives. Thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for being part of this project and, and all the hard work that you have been doing in the previous months. Uh, I just want to ask you and your perspectives about, you know, what do you think has been the main um, learning from your perspective for the students that have been participating in the, from this experience? You know, what, what are the benefits that you see in the students and taking part of from this? I think one of the big things for me is um, this idea around pupil voice um, I, I, and I would go further than say pupil voice I'd say it's about it's not about pupil voice anymore it's about pupil action it's about pupil empowerment um, and the presentations that we've, um, we've witnessed this morning from Chile from St Unans and, and, and from St Peter the Apostle just show how how powerful um, the, the actions of young people can be um, and I think the, one of the biggest learning um, experiences for myself as a teacher and having taught for nearly 10 years now and uh, as just just the power of young people um, and just seeing that how much young people can can achieve um, if they put their minds to it and that's definitely something I, I think you can see and everyone here would agree that um, you know the passion that young people have for for the environment and for the local community uh, is is the thing that's going to going to make the change it's not it's not um, across there, uh, across the river, that's going to be the, the young people here and th this morning will make that change. And I think for, for us, the teachers and researchers, you know, the adults, we need to be prepared for that because they, they, they got it and they, they, they will move forward. And if, if, we, if we don't join them, they will run without us, you know, so it's an opportunity. I don't know if you... If you... And they need our support with that as well. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we found um, with the ideas our pupils were coming up with Pupils in schools can have great ideas, but in order to get those ideas into action, they need help from us, mm -hmm. they need help from our school leadership, from our council as well, and it has to, we have to like, give them that assistance they need in order to turn it into actuality. Yeah. 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 I think we can often underestimate our young people that we teach, you know, especially mm -hmm. um, in a primary school, you often maybe think, you know, how loud can they really be? But I think, you know, to echo what's been said already, you know, giving them that opportunity to really stand up and to see, you know, how far, you know, in terms of a context for them, how far it can really go um, and that their voices can be heard. You know, it's something we're really passionate about in Sweden's and have been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's promoting, you know, and empowering our young people to make sure that they know they can make a difference. They're the future leaders, you know, the world has to kind of be in their hands. So giving them these opportunities to show them how far that can actually go and um, the impact that they can actually have. Um, I think we'll really support them for their future as well. And I was really excited just in the, the softer skills as well, the, the enthusiasm mm -hmm. they had to meet and share and smile and laugh with people on the other side of the planet was really wonderful. It was, in, you know, and obviously the technology has made a big help to that. And now I'm here saying, to our senior pupils, these are the these are our climate activists mm. of the future in St Peter mm -hmm. the Apostle, and hopefully it'll be my the senior pupils that'll be leading the, the group mm. rather than 
um, the, you know, the teachers that, that, that we build this momentum that one group leads the next and, and we build that um, passion. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I, I would love to, 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 to bring to the conversation to our Chileans partners. Um, they are all connected and in, in, in watching this. Hola. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in the Chilean team, we have some uh, teachers, school teachers, but also pre-service teachers that have been part of the project in, in, in developing their skills and preparation. So I, I would love to, to ask, you, ask Joaquin, um, you know, in, in your role as a pre-service teacher, to, to what extent this experience prepares you better for, for becoming a teacher? Hola a todos, Hola. buenos días. Eh, principalmente mi experiencia y mi papel dentro de este proyecto ha sido eh, implementar de cierta forma las ideas que ha tenido el equipo. Me, me ha tocado trabajar directamente con los niños y niñas en, acá en Chile y hemos tratado de desarrollar el proyecto de la mejor manera posible, tratando de llevar nuestras ideas y las ideas de los niños eh, a todos y que podamos sacar adelante esto. So, and so um, Joaquin, what, what are the aspects that you think, um, you know, the, the pre-service preparation needs to be highlighted to prepare teachers for the future of teaching? Bueno, eh, esencialmente todos sabemos que el futuro del mundo y de, y de la enseñanza gira en torno a lo que es el cambio climático. Eh, es una de las principales preocupaciones y una de las principales, uno de los principales motivos que están motivando a, a muchas personas a, a hablar de esto. Eh, siento que es esencial, tanto para un profesor en formación como soy yo, como también para todos los niños y niñas, eh, que se nos enseñe, que se nos hable y que se nos prepare para enfrentar este tipo de, de situaciones. Eh, siento que es muy importante para las universidades sobre todo, preparar a sus profesores, eh, enseñarles todo lo que tienen que saber sobre el cambio climático. Es muy necesario que nosotros principalmente estemos preparados porque finalmente somos quienes guiamos a, a todos estos niños y niñas a que puedan desarrollar estas, estas habilidades y a, que, y a que puedan de alguna forma eh, tomar su, usar su voz para, para ayudar frente al cambio climático. <risa> Thank you, thank you, Joaquin. Um, Milena, you you have a role as a as a faculty staff, um, and and I, I would like to ask you, you know, in your view, what is the what is the major contribution of of developing this international collaboration among schools and universities to bring student voice to the forefront of climate change issues? Muchas gracias, Romina. Eh, creo que la principal contribución que hemos tenido es este aprendizaje en red que hemos ido de a poco, paso a paso, desarrollando en todos los actores que están involucrados en este proyecto. No solo la universidad se vincula con la escuela, sino que existen también vínculos con otros países. Y esos vínculos que pueden ser trazados por los adultos terminan llegando a nuestro objetivo final, que son los niños, las niñas, los adolescentes. Entonces, cuando existe una colaboración internacional y todos estamos pensando en cómo podemos potenciar las habilidades de nuestros adultos, yo creo que mejora todo el entorno, nos da a todos una diferente visión de lo que estamos haciendo, no solo localmente, sino que ahora con diferentes puntos de vista para que podamos potenciar cada aspecto de nosotros y poder así implementar diferentes actividades que quizás en soledad serían más difíciles de realizar. Pero como somos un equipo, como hay aquí profesores en formación, profesores de la universidad que trabajamos formando profesores, es el deber de todos también que podamos actualizarnos, compartir nuestra experiencia para que podamos crear un mundo mejor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Milena, for, for your reflections. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's about how we can, you know, use the, the, the connection between the schools and, and universities um, to, to create alliances that bring more people on board. And so, so in order to do that, we need to be prepared to, 
to have conversations that include more than one voice. And so that is a learning from the university and from the school system, I think, as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I just wanna just wanna say thank you again and 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 for, for the for the experiences for all all the dedication of, that you have had in the project and in your role because without you is it's, it's, it's impossible as, as you Duncan were saying you know they need us or they need that we are here to, to guide them and so our role is also important so yes thank you big 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 thank you thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. And now we're getting closer to the final moment and the final piece of, of this session today, uh, which is going to be like a, like a keep and I know a conversation with other voices as well. Um, so I, I I would love to invite um, Mrs. Lorna um, and yeah, Mrs. Slater as well and. Uh, Laura, if you can join us as well, that would be great. And also Ben is going to be joining us. Create a mix of question time and Jules following. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> question and time I'm, can get a bit nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping that we have some really good questions from our children and young people. This is this this is your opportunity really to have your say and ask some searching questions. Of, of our panel. And hola Chile. Hi Carlos. No, I'm actually looking there. <laughs> hola, que tal, please? Yeah, very well, thank you. And so glad that you can join us. And uh, it's a little bit later in the morning than it was when it was nine o'clock our time. So, so thanks for hanging in with us. It was really good to see you. And uh, so Carlos and our team we've been working for um, together now for for years. Do I need a, do I need a microphone? So they can hear me on Zoom. Oh, so they can hear me on Zoom. Okay, I thought my voice was loud enough to sort of at least penetrate um, this this room. So I'm I'm going to ask the first question because I can do that. But I want you to put your thinking caps on and hopefully you've got some questions lined up. Have you got one, Matthew? Thinking. You're thinking, <laughs> right? Okay, great, great. So I'm I'm I'm, not, I'm going to kick off first of all. To, um, to, to Laura, to our director um, of ed edu education um, in Western Bartonshire. So, and the question is, pupils in Clyde Bank have shared some of their concerns about climate change and the, the impacts um, that are pertinent to them in their neighborhoods. What more do you think, got this, who, who came up with this? What more do you think that Western Bartonshire Council could do to listen to children and what changes would you like to see to ensure they grow up in a healthy, safe, and climate-friendly environment? Not much to start with then. That's, that's what they call the, an easer, just to, to, just to, warm, to warm you up. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing I would say is listening to you all today, thank you. I couldn't be more proud um, of, of the way you have all presented and the challenges you have brought to us um, you've, you've challenged me. I thought I knew what I was coming to, but the reality of seeing this and seeing the young people in Chile and the people who work with you all pulling together, we saw parents in Chile as well. It's quite remarkable. And that has to be a lesson we can learn. In terms of how we can listen, you have told me more today than, you know, I, I would have said, yes, we've got pupil voice going on. Yes, we've got green spaces. But you've actually challenged me to go away and think about that a lot mm. more. Mm. 
I think what I need to do after today is meet with you all again. And I know we've got climate ambassadors and all our other schools as well. I really need to get you together because even that bit, I was very embarrassed when I read that, that you asked the council for a bin and you couldn't get one. Now that's not acceptable. So I don't know if it was your catering person that asked a manager or whatever, but I hadn't heard that. That's the sort of thing I'm prepared to take that on and arrange for you to meet directly with your councillors um, so that we can bridge that gap between the wonderful things you're doing in school and in your communities and how we can make that happen across more of our nurseries, our primaries, our secondaries, with our parents, with our communities. There's so much, so many ideas you have given. And I think the best thing I can do is listen to you better and find a way of getting that disjoin between what's happening and the policies that are being made. So I think that that would be my answer um, for that, Chris. Thanks very much, Laura. And I'm, I'm going to come to Lorna in a, in a second, but um, did, did I um, just hear a commitment there? A pledge, <laughs> and we all witnessed it. <laughs> we, we all witnessed it. So, you know, that's really what this has been about, isn't it? This is about action on the ground. So, you know, thank you so much for, for that commitment. That, that, that's that's really appreciated, Lorna. Um, we, we've heard of a, a, a commitment from local government. You know what the next question is. <laughs> and what about national government? The thing to remember about all politicians is that we work for you. And I'll tell you, the oil and gas companies are not shy about calling us and writing us letters. It was oil and gas lobbyists were the first people to contact me when I became a member of the Scottish Parliament. So make sure you're doing it. You can write letters, you can phone us, you can meet your local politicians. You've got councillors, you've got members of Scottish Parliament. You, you used to have members of the European Parliament. We'll gloss right over that. Um, <laughs> you've got members of Parliament in Westminster as well. Talk to all of them. You can write them letters. You can go and meet them. They'll have local surgeries where you can go and talk to them. You can come and visit us in Parliament. So remember that we are working for you. You don't just vote for us and then we disappear. You need to make sure we are doing the work that you want us to do. And it's easier if you're behind us because then I, I, I can stand up in the chamber and say, the students in my area they want this and I'm here to see that it happens. It helps us. It, it helps us to do the right thing when we know our voters and our people are behind us. So we would absolutely welcome that. Make sure that it's not just the oil and gas companies that are talking to politicians that you are too. Great, thank you. That's, that, 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 that's really powerful. So the, the, the call is to use your voice. We've, we've used that word student voice a lot. But let's think about it more broadly. You, know, you can make a difference. You can change things. We've, we've, we've heard the Scottish perspective. I'm just going to come and, and ask Carlos what, for the Chilean perspective on, on these issues. What more do you think um, sort of districts, municipalities in Chile and national government could do in Chile in relation to um, acting on climate change? Hola, Cris, muchas gracias por tu pregunta. Bueno, uno de los cambios eh, curriculares que ha existido de manera reciente en Chile es una nueva asignatura que se llama Ciencias para la Ciudadanía, para los estudiantes de tercero o cuarto medio, que aproximadamente son estudiantes de entre 16 y 18 años. Entonces, en esta asignatura nace un módulo que se llama Ambiente y Sostenibilidad, donde se abordan temáticas como el uso sostenible de los recursos, la eficiencia energética, gestión de residuos y cambio climático, finalmente. Y esta asignatura tiene una particularidad de que se basa en el aprendizaje basado en proyectos. Entonces, los estudiantes no solo deben estar tanto de contenidos o conceptos relacionados al cambio climático, sino que su formación finalmente apunta a la toma de decisiones, acciones, a través de un producto final que es comunicado a un destinatario como su comunidad escolar, su vecindario o a alguna autoridad. Y si esta metodología, por ejemplo, consideramos el enfoque de capacidades que, que proviene de Escocia, ¿cierto? Que se considera la historia de vida de, su estudia, de los estudiantes, sus capacidades, su territorio, si le otorga voz, 
eh, pudieron, se pueden generar proyectos muy interesantes como los que mostraron hoy día el Colegio San Peter de Apóstol y los estudiantes del Colegio Luis Cruz Martínez. Entonces así les van dando sentido a lo que han ido aprendiendo, es cercano, es importante y se va conectando con la realidad. Y para cerrar, esta experiencia con esta metodología y cómo esto se aplica finalmente al currículum eh, de las escuelas, eh, esta metodología debería ampliarse más que nada como a, a todas las edades eh, del sistema escolar por tres razones. Uno, el rol de la educación para promover finalmente un sentimiento de esperanza y resiliencia en estos tiempos complejos debido al cambio climático donde muchas veces el currículum tradicional, uno se, se presenta mucha información y reportes sobre el cambio climático que obviamente son lapidarios. Y eso finalmente produce en nuestro estudiante una, una especie de angustia o, o existencia marcada por, un, por una desesperanza. Entonces, esta forma de abordar estas temáticas con el enfoque de capacidad y... y y el aprendizaje basado en proyectos ayuda mucho a eso. Otro aspecto que también es súper relevante a nivel de, de gestión curricular es cómo es necesario abordar una desconex desconexión que existe entre la educación científica, la emergencia climática, dentro de una agenda neoliberal. Entonces, en, en nuestro caso, en Chile, el currículum en ciencia se basa en una política neoliberal, y por lo tanto, muchas veces los valores promovidos se expresan desde una responsabilidad individual, que no permite cuestionar elementos estructurales, ni articular finalmente el conocimiento científico con estas dimensiones políticas, sociales, económicas y medioambientales. Entonces, utilizar este enfoque, esta forma de, de realizar proyectos, como los que mostraron hoy día los, los estudiantes, los niños, eh, permite, ¿cierto?, situarse en un marco legal, en la agenda, en los compromisos que tienen los países en función a los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible eh, y las problemáticas medioambientales que están en el, en el territorio. Gracias, Cris. Yeah. Yeah. Th 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 thanks, thanks, Carlos. Um, I, you, you get into some big issues there. And I think um, two of the things that binds our two countries together um, are our values in, 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 edu in edu education. And you, you spoke about um, neoliberal um, and the, the, the extent to which sort of competition and markets drive the agenda in Chile. Um, and really, my senses from being privileged to, to work with you is that um, the academy and the university and the education systems uh, um, act as a bit of a buffer to that. I think in the same way that our university system um, works in the same way. And if we go back to what I said at the beginning about the values um, of those workers in East Kilbride that found solidarity with the people of Chile, I think there's something that's greater than even climate change that binds us and, and holds us together. So thank you for that. The, the other thing I want to draw out from, from, from what you said, really, and it came out in the St. Peter the Apostle uh, uh, um, pre presentation, is um, your commitment to, to science and your attention to detail in terms of methodology. And, 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 I, and I think that's something that we all found very impressive in the work that's been going on in Chile and, and it is something that, uh, that, uh, will, that we will go away and think about, I think. And I say that as a science teacher in the, in the dim distant past a long, a long time ago, um, a failed science teacher, I hasten to add, which is why I'm standing here. So, um, so, so, so th thanks, Carlos. Um, do you, I'm just thinking about Ben and Romina's experience of this as researchers from the university perspective. Um, and of course, Carlos, you span that divide, working part-time in the university and part-time in the school. What, what are the key messages and learning that Romina and, and Ben have taken away from this partnership to date? Because this isn't an event, this isn't the end. You know, I think this is the beginning of something very special, actually. I mean, I will say that the most powerful message to me is 
we are stronger together. And I, I come from Chile and we, where, where the culture is slightly different and has been um, much more individualistic. So much focus on yourself. You need to, you know, take, see for yourself is your is your opportunity or, you know like if you can you know go and get advanced from another you, you should do it because that is the way in which some things happens of course has marvelous things as well i i love my country but i think um what, what we need to learn in, in in the whole world you know these these days is just we we need to um make connections with others others and when we bro broke those connections and we realized you know and we talk to people and see we realize that we are more alike than, than different, to be honest. And, and there is a lot of power in, in that connection and that capacity of com coming together. And I think researcher and, and, and education has a tool to help us to do that better. But, but the main thing to me is like a citizen call. You know, we, we need to take action for the things that are happening in the world. Many things, climate change, but also immigration. I mean, there are all those things going on in the world. But, but but don't don't be don't be sad or um, without hope. I will say it too. You know we need to create hope for each other because we can do things and they can be good. Um, so yeah, that, that is. I mean, I don't know if that responds to your question. No, that, that that's that's great. Thanks, Romina. I'm just gonna pass to Ben, and then I'm gonna come on to uh, Laura, Laura and Lorna and ask about changes in Scottish education in relation to climate change. So just to give you a couple of minutes to have a ponder on that Ben yeah I think Romina almost stole my answer a wee bit there but I think the last thing she mentioned was really important talking about hope I think is really really significant for young people because it can be really daunting and a bit overwhelming when we think about the impacts of climate change for all of us growing up but especially you guys and I think as educators we and adults we all have a responsibility to give you guys hope and make you feel empowered as well and, and I think this project has kind of demonstrated that and seeing people 7,000 miles across the ocean, they care just as much as you do. And they're, and they're trying as hard as you are to make changes and to have a bit of an impact. And I think that's a really powerful way of, of inspiring hope in other people. It's definitely made me feel a lot more hopeful um, and hopefully you guys as well. Um, and I think the second thing as, as kind of was mentioned on the teachers panel was this idea of soft skills. And I think hope often comes in connection with empathy as well. And I think what we've really built, like Romina said, was a connection there between, between the schools and all of us in the room as well. And that's really, really powerful. And it, it's a way of kind of combating this individualized action that is kind of, I think, not really working so far. And I think it's only, it's only collectively can we kind of do something. And, and in many ways, that's what we're doing as schools and, and as researchers as well. Great, th great. Thanks, Ben. I'm going to give Laura and Lorna a little more thinking time and going to come to the floor. Does anyone want to ask a question from the floor? OK, OK, Minister. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> What is the Scottish government going to do to make schools and education establishments more carbon neutral? Um, I guess that's one for Lorna. <laughs> that's a Scottish government one. I'll, just, I'll give you a bit of context here. So um, I'm co-leader of the Scottish Greens. Before I was elected, I was an engineer, which I would love to talk to you a bit about as well in terms of education and stuff. Uh, so then I became a member of the Scottish Parliament. Um, then the first minister over the summer invited myself and my colleague Patrick Harvey to join her government. So now I'm a government minister as well. And as part of that agreement to join the government, we negotiated a cooperation agreement between the Scottish Greens and the Scottish government. And a part of that is about upgrading public buildings. So that agreement is about quite a large millions and millions of pounds to go and do exactly what you've asked us to do. Upgrade not just schools, but hospitals and other big public buildings to upgrade their heating systems where we can put in things like heat pumps and ground loop heat pumps so that we're not using 
gas to heat the buildings, to insulate them so we use less energy overall. This is a big, important part of how we're going to tackle climate change. So excellent question, and we're on the case. Great. Uh, th <coughs> th thanks, Lorna. I think we have another question here. <laughs> How do we encourage pupils to recycle and not drop litter when they see adults doing it in and around the community? A great question. What can we do to encourage pupils not to drip litter and to recycle when we see adults doing it all around us? Laura's got them. I'll give it a go. <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> as the coming from the council who didn't give you a bin for your uh, food in the canteen. Um, I think we're all aware that um, the problem of littering, fly tipping, the correlation between that and the quality of the environment that you're growing up in, it seems to be the poorest communities in Scotland that have the biggest problem with that. Um, you are most affected by that. So I think what we need to do is that's, some, that's one of the areas where we can really work together to get your ideas about how we do that. Um, where we've said, yes, young people need support to take their ideas forward. I'm saying I can give you a channel right up to the, the top of the council. Um, I, I do think that it's that collaboration and how, how we see that through. I mean, it, it's not acceptable. There are laws against it, but it still happens. So I would be happy to listen. Your voices are actually stronger and more powerful when it comes to that. But we saw in St, I think it was the St. Peter the Apostle film, the, the um, littering. We saw it in Chile as well, the, the problem of that. And it's almost as if it's been acceptable and you all have to make that unacceptable we all have a duty it's it's the responsibility of everybody so it is about providing what you need to make that okay but it's also about making it more than just the climate ambassador or eco warrior in your school or more than just a lunchtime club and this is where I would get into the curriculum bit um, Chris and the Scottish education if I, if I can just carry on there you may um, I, I think it's the what we've seen through COP26 the context for learning have been incredible you have all led your learning you've been doing things you want to do you the the how that progresses has been up to you with a guide from your teacher the assessment's probably just been discussion on the way as you go. You'll have been talking about it with your teachers and everything, and probably when you go home. But for, for me, it's how do we scale all of that up? So whether it's a litter problem or whether it's something even bigger than that, how do we get that across our communities? And I think you need to be the ambassadors of that. And it's how we put together structures to let you do that. So that I think the, the learning for sustainability, the, the rights-based approach, all the UNCRC stuff that you're all so aware of, that has to be utterly at the core of what we do, not an extra and not a lunchtime club. So I, I think it's, it, that, that's our challenge. Thank, thanks, Laura. Yeah, very, very quickly. I'd say as well, talk, talk to your families and your friends about it as well. It's a really powerful way of doing it. People don't always know what you know. You know, I think you mentioned about the curriculum. Climate change wasn't in the curriculum for a long time in Scotland and all over the world as well. So your parents or your older siblings might not necessarily know about these issues that maybe feel really passionate to you. So it is really important that you're able to talk to them and, and have a conversation and call us adults out as well um, when you see it. But we should be leading by example, but sometimes we have to let you lead by example as well. Um, yeah. Great, thanks, Ben. Um, and in the interests of gender balance, we're going to go to a male in the audience. And then we're going to have another question from the audience. And then we have a question from Chile, I, be I believe. So the floor is yours, sir. Could WDC create dedicated areas for horticulture in school in the same way that areas for PPE are provided? Sorry, Laura, that's another one for you, isn't that's it? That's a very <laughs> tough one. Right. So 
I think already we have that in many of our schools. One of the things that we're doing, um, the food to the, the growing to eating project. So we've got them throughout our early learning and childcare centres. We're growing them into um, the primaries as well. Many of our schools have gardens, but what about the, the, the project we saw with Chile, where they're actually going into the community and making the spaces um, you know, for, for everybody? We all have that entitlement. You, you have that entitlement to green space, to outdoor learning, to being outside and learning outside. So I'm very happy to look at your suggestion and see what we can do for the schools that don't have that. I don't know as well, Lorna, if, if kind of, I know your part of your remit is green skills as well. And I don't know if that's something that kind of comes under that is how we, how we educate children to, to kind of be able to do these jobs of the future that are going to be really important. And I know horticulture is definitely one of them and you, you have an engineering background as well. So maybe. Great. I, I, I'd like to make myself redundant. It's great. You guys are coming. <laughs> well, that, that segues nicely into my favorite thing. Yeah. Talking about green skills. So, in, in the future in Scotland, we're, we're preparing for the industries of the future. And what we mean by that is things that will have a long-term future. We know we can't, there's some things that we have to stop, you know, things like fossil fuel extraction is going to have to stop. There are damaging industries that are going to have to change. Um, but what we need to do is get ready for the new industries, the kind of jobs that you will have, the kind of jobs that your kids and grandkids will have. And I think there's three kind of categories of that. One is the sort of engineering and technology piece, which is where I came from. How many of you know what an engineer does? Brilliant. I'm delighted to hear that because so many people don't know. How many of you are thinking of studying or taking an apprenticeship in engineering? Come on, guys. Come on. Because the, the brilliant thing about engineering and technology and all those, because you can get into engineering through an apprenticeship, through university, through college, there's lots of different ways in, is that you are solving the problems. I used to work in tidal energy, so that's a clean type of energy. So if you want to solve the world's problems, that means you're on the cutting edge of it. You're one of the people making a big difference. And one of the things I always really enjoyed about engineering was that you're part of a team, so you're never on your own. You're working with other really interesting, fun people to get the job done. Another part of the green skills is around restoring our land and our seas. So we know that our seabeds have been damaged by dredging and trawling and, and lack of care. And we know our landscapes, the biodiversity, species, animals are going extinct. Woodlands have been damaged. Waterways, peatlands have been damaged. So we have a national project to restore our land, to regenerate it, to put back our forests and our peatlands. And these are, there are going to be enormous opportunities for learning, for growing, for growing food in regenerative ways, for making that sure that our land is healthy and has lots of animals and things living in it. But that's going to take a lot of work. So that's an area where you can learn, which you can learn about and study. And the final part of that is maybe less glamorous, but we call it the circular economy. And that is where it's like what you were talking about with the fast fashion, rather than buying something and then throwing it away, which causes litter and causes waste. It's not very efficient. We want to buy things and learn how to repair them or reuse them, keep them going, keep them going. So instead of being proud of buying something cheaply, we will be proud of our repairing skills. I know how to fix my phone. I know how to fix my socks when they get a hole in. You know, that's what I want all of us to be proud of doing. So these are the main areas of skills and these are the big industries and jobs for the future. Sí. Era también para complementar un poco la intervención que realizó la colega y muchas veces yo creo que el punto crítico o punto clave es la capacidad de actuar, como han ido mencionando los demás eh, panelistas. Eh, Hello, Carlos, Carlos. <laughs> it's, it's like um, the Eurovision Song Contest gone wrong. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Uh, Carlos, can, can I just take one question from the floor? Entonces, I've got Rebecca wait, wait, waiting here, and then, then I'll come straight to you, okay? Yeah, b b apologies. Rebecca. Uh, could, could we relaunch all the Western Barnshire Council School uniforms to make them more environmentally friendly, maybe using more sustain, sustainable materials? 
This is turning into question time for Laura. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't think I would actually have to write things down. I've got so many things I've said that I'm, I really must uh, come back to you on. So the latest being school uniforms. Now, I know that these you do that individually in your own schools and work with different companies and things. So why don't we make that on our agenda when, when we get a group together? Um, that could be something else that we discuss because um, I think at the moment to say one thing for for every school we, we need to start getting other people involved in that but an excellent idea thank you for that okay th th thanks very much Laura I know that Carlos has a comment and then I think Anna in Chile has, has, has a question so we're now just going to flip our 7,000 miles over to Chile Eh, sí, para, para cerrar un poco eh, eh, algunas intervenciones y comentarios, también yo los trato de situar también nuevamente al, al currículum, que muchas veces eh, es importante cómo uno tiene que abordar transversalmente estas temáticas en todos los niveles educativos, sobre todo en, el, en la emergencia global en la que vivimos hoy en día. Muchas veces... Eh, por lo menos en Chile, eh, se transita mucho sobre los niveles de conocer sobre la ciencia. Replica a nivel escolar lo que hacen los científicos desde una visión a veces mucho más técnica en el aula y aplican, por ejemplo, grandes ideas sobre la ciencia o que trabajan en, en distintas asignaturas, aplican esos, con, esos conocimientos a situaciones cotidianas. Pero hay que dar un paso más adelante, finalmente, para llegar al actuar o a la promoción de un sentido eh, sociocomunitario que puede tener, por ejemplo, el currículum de ciencias, eh, donde se ven temáticas súper importantes como la gestión de recursos, los recursos naturales, temas de energía que se ven en el currículum de ciencia y que ofrecen oportunidades para que los estudiantes eh, propongan ideas y a la vez propongan acciones y soluciones. Eso. Le doy el paso a... Thanks, Carlos. Very important insights. Um, Anna. Chris, can you, she's on mute. You're, you're, you're on mute, I think, Anna. It's right, I do this on a daily occurrence, so I wouldn't worry about it. You know, it's only taken me 18 months to learn to press a button. Are you with us? We can't hear you, Anna. Maybe, maybe they can type it. Could you type your question in chat, perhaps? Yeah, we're struggling. You can read it. Okay. So in the interim, who has another question for the panel? Oh, look at the hands shooting up. This is fun. We're going to go down here. Yep. And then we're going to go somewhere there, I think. Okay. Uh, these past COPs, um, climate change has only gotten worse in Scotland. So what are you going to do to make this one um, help with the climate in Scotland? Lorna, that's, that's for, for me brilliant Glad good question thank you very much so i'm sure you know this but a conference of the parties is a conference of all the countries of the of the un um unfortunately scotland is not one of those um we are what's called a sub-state actor which means we're not one of the nation states so what we are doing is working along with other sub-state actors so that's other cities other like american states other kind of bits of bits of the world that are not actually their own separate countries because it doesn't matter to some extent what the big countries decide we can still do better we are not constrained by what they do and actually i think small countries like scotland because we can be more nimble we can change more quickly and particularly in scotland because we have so much renewable energy available to us we can make change very quickly. And so I think what we can do is 
be a role model to the rest of the world. We can say, this is how you do it. This is how it can be done. So I think that's the role we play. Um, in our school, we sell about 280 bottles of like plastic bottles of water a day. So that's like around like 1,000 bottles a week. And we want to know um, what we can do to make change in our school and why is it so difficult for you to enact grassroots? Um, to enact grassroots change in our corridors, classrooms, and playgrounds. Can you t can you repeat the end of your question? The first bit was about water bottles, plastic bottles. Yeah, we want to know um, what else we can do to like, make change in our school and um, how we can enact grassroots changes in our corridors, classrooms and playgrounds. Okay, well, again, when I go back to thinking about the presentation you did and the barriers you found and the research you did and the things you came up with, you've probably got the answers to that. I'm, I'm not sure why everybody in your school isn't bringing their own water cup in. I don't know why that would be the case. So again, that's something we would look at individually because I'm almost certain we had already done that work on the plastic bottles. In terms of the grassroots in every corridor and every part of your school, are you talking about how we make that change happen? Yeah, I, I think this goes back to the children's rights and what your how, how you are all able to insist on your rights but also how we help all our educators to understand that um that these rights are they, they are your rights and, and what we need to do to make that happen and if we get all the conversations right that actually don't do the blah blah and do do the action that's where we can get a real legacy for Western Bartonshire from the, the COP work that's happened. We can get together, make, make a list of the things that are mattering most to you, to all of you, and see what we can do at council level to make these changes. But an awful lot of this is going to be down to you because you, you I promise you, have a, such a strong voice in comparison to what else can go on. Your influence will be very strong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the question is, um, what elements do you do you consider relevant to incorporate into the educational system in an environmental climate education? Um, well, so I'll answer that question. I, I, so I'm not I'm not the minister for education. Um, so what I have am is the Minister for Green Skills. So where I'm interested in with the green skills is making sure that you do have an understanding of how every part of what you learn affects the climate, whether it is storytelling and writing poems, whether it's creating art, whether it is supporting your community, like learning how to be an activist, whether it's becoming a politician, you can work for climate in any role that you take. So I don't want you to think of, and I'm sure you don't, think of the environment of, and climate as one thing that you can do. As you're choosing your studies going forward, whether you take an apprenticeship or whether you decide to go on to college, you will be working for the climate in whatever you do and you can integrate that as part of what you do because the climate isn't just something we do some of the time some people it's got to be everybody all the time and i know you'll take those things with you great thanks very much lorna i'm i'm conscious that we are accelerating towards um 11 30. i know there are many 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 more questions um, in our audience today. I can see that hands are starting to fly up um, as, as every minute passes us by. Um, but what I'm going to do by way of drawing us to a close is to ask each of our panel members to sticking to one or two sentences to give you and me, the audience, a key message to take away from today's session, okay? One or two sentences, Carlos, and I know that when we get chatting, we chat for hours, okay? So we've got to keep, we need to be really tight. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with our colleagues in Chile. So, Carlos. 
sí, eh, resiliencia y alfabetización científica. Perfecto. Gracias. Resilience and more science education. I, I like that. And we're just going to go along the line. I will say um, collaboration and um, um, humanity. Uh, I'd say be hopeful and work together. I think I would say listening better, talking less, and making sure that the talk becomes action. It's something that you can see as a result. I'm I'm a practical person from engineering background, so I like the practical things. I like your campaign to remove the bottles. I like asking about the school uniforms. I like your in-house deposit return scheme and picking up the litter in your schoolyards and neighborhoods. Those are really practical things that make a huge difference. So practical action and everything you do matters. Your hard work matters. Thank you, everybody. What a fantastic set of key messages to take away from today's session. Um, it just really leaves me um, with the honor, really, of thanking all of you, children, young people, students, pupils, teachers, support staff, thanking our panel who have been so um, gracious with their time and, and also their thoughts and, and ideas. Remember, we started the morning talking about learning and ideas and how important learning and ideas are. There's a theme that runs through this for me, and it was said in various different ways across the panel, collaboration, partnership, working together. We can't do this alone. We have to work together, we have to organize, and you can organize and you can make a difference individually, but more importantly, collectively. Together, you can bring about the change that's necessary and you are the, you are the future. So thank you everybody for coming, as I said, and giving up your time. And as I said, again, also, I think this is the start of a journey in this partnership between Chile, University of Glasgow, West Dumbartonshire. Um, so thank you and have a safe journey home. And thank you especially to Carlos and colleagues in Chile. You know, without you guys, this would never have happened. You're phenomenal. Thank you very much. Goodbye and safe travel. Thank <laughs> you.